to Fight Night StarCraft Arcade Edition, featuring some of the top players from around the world, with 25,000 in prize money on the line. Who will go home the StarCraft champion? This is Fight Night. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another series of Fight Night here at ESGN TV. My name is Dan Cho, and tonight is the beginning of a special arcade edition of StarCraft II. So let's meet the players who will be appearing on this series of Fight Night StarCraft Arcade Edition. Grubby. Sake. Hasuops. MVP. Nesty. Stefano. White Ra. And select. Now that you met our players, it's time to go to the wheel to determine our two team captains with Kevin and Koning, also known as Hearthstone. All right, today I'll determine who the team captains are by spinning this wheel, and uh, I would say uh, let's start with it. Enough talk, let's go. All right, who will it be? Looks like it's coming up on Stefano. MVP. Nice. It's MVP. Come on down. Congratulations, MVP. You're the first team captain. If you could pick, uh, who would you like to have in your team? What are your preferences? Name three more players. Groovy, Select, and ST. So... Grubby, Select, and Nasty. Uh, we'll see if he actually gets them, but for now, we'll need to get our second team captain. And uh, I'll spin the wheel again, I guess. I'm sure we do. It would be quite poetic if one of the persons he chose ends up being team captain. Looks like it will be Stefano. Come on down. Congratulations, Stefano. Uh, you're the second team captain, so team number two. Do you have uh, any preferences of who you would like to have in your team? Absolutely. I would like to have Grubby, Zoke, and Hazu in my team. So going for the all foreign lineup, so to say. Uh, all Protoss lineup. All Protoss, all foreign. He knows what he wants, and he wants it quickly. So then, what's next? Well, Kevin, it's time to invite our two referees up to determine the remaining teams. All right, it's time to determine who will be able to get on each team's MVP. Let's start with you. Let's pick our first player. And it's Grubby. Ask and you shall receive. All right, Stefano, <laughs> it's your turn. Go ahead. Grubby's already taken. And it's White Raw, so he gets another Protoss instead. All right, MVP, it's your pick. And it's Hasuobs. All right, Stefano, you still can get Sokka. And he gets Sokka. <laughs> All right, now there's only two members left. MVP, Select or Nest T. It's Select, which means Nest T is going to be on Stefano's team. All right, so it's MVP, Grubby, Hasu, and Select versus Stefano, White Raw, Sokka, and Nest T. We don't know the first map yet, but the commentators will tell you all about it. So let's send it over to Nathanius and Harstam. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to ESGN TV's Fight Night. I am Nathan Nathanius Fabricant. Joining me is Kevin Harstam DeConing. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Nathan. Thanks. Uh, it's going to be the first arcade fight night that we had. Uh, last time we did a regular fight night, and this time it's going to be with arcade games in the Blizzard Arcade, recently gone free to play. And we got a lot of top tier players here two Koreans, five Europeans, and one American. So I can't wait to see what they have in store. 
Yeah, especially considering, as you said, it is the arcade edition, non-standard maps. Typically, these players are competing in the normal 1v1 scene, but these are maps created by members of the community, members of Blizzard, and be frank, maps they would not normally play on as much. Do you have any favorites playing in our unusual tournament format this week? Well, I talked a bit with Hasu and I've seen him play and he definitely looks like a scary, scary contender to go up against. He has been preparing uh, some strategies. I've talked a bit with him. Uh, I, of course, know those custom maps as well. And we've been uh, yeah, sharing a little bit of information. And I think he has a very good shot at winning this. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see just how much the, the foreigners have practiced this match, uh, these maps, especially compared to those Korean players. But for those of you at home that may not know as much about the maps or the format for this week's games, we prepared a short demonstration video to illustrate some of the differences you'll see compared to a normal StarCraft II competition. StarCraft II is a one-on-one -on -one real time strategy game made by Blizzard Entertainment. Players choose one of three races, Terran, Zerg, or Protoss then develop their civilization and fight against opposing armies. In a game of StarCraft II, there are a few key things to consider. The resource count of minerals and gas, the power of the army and population, often referred to as supply count, and the overall map control. Players that have significant advantages in all three areas are usually in a prime position to win. So the key to StarCraft II is to know when to develop your own strategy and when to concentrate on your opponent's plan. A player wins when he has eliminated all the buildings of his opponent. StarCraft II players need a combination of immense physical speed, mental fortitude and devious strategies in order to come out on top and crush their opponent. Macro Micro splits the normal StarCraft II melee settings into two divisions of labor. One player controls the economy, the other player controls the army. The gray areas, such as scouting workers, can be swapped between the player's control, depending on their comfort levels. Coordination, communication and patience are the key elements when playing Macro Micro. The objective remains the same, kill all enemy buildings. So here are the rules for StarCraft II Fight Night Arcade Edition. Eight players will play in Blizzard's free-to-play arcade in the StarCraft II engine. Each round, teams and players will be randomly selected by the heartless ESGN wheel. At the end of the round, each player who wins receives 250 points, while each losing player receives minus 100. At the end of the four rounds, the highest four players advance to a single elimination bracket where they play normal StarCraft II for a prize pool of $2,000. And now that you guys have seen the week's format, it's time to find out what map we'll be playing for this round of Fight Night. What do we have, Harsom? Well, for the first Fight Night Arcade Edition, we have the Micro Macro map. And what this map basically does, it divides the game into two tasks, the economy aspect of the game and the fighting or the army aspect. And two players will be basically controlling what normally one player does. One will be doing the Micro, also known as controlling the army, and the other the Macro, or controlling the economy and uh, I think the most vital part in this will be the communication between the players what strategy do we use where do you want my units to be and uh, I'm very curious how they will solve this yeah it's especially interesting considering that we do have the teams kind of split the foreigners and the Koreans how will they choose their strategies how effectively can they communicate it's the real challenge of tonight's arcade uh, fight night and it's basically two players from each of these teams going head to head against two from the other but working together as one and now to find out who those teams will be we're gonna toss it over to Dan Cho the teams got together to pick players for each match for our first round it's Sokka Nest T versus Grubby and MVP Hey Grubby, so the first map is Macro Micro and you have your team. Do you have any thoughts on some of these team members you have? Well, I think I think my team is pretty good. Uh, I've got uh, MVP, Select and uh, uh, Hasso Ops. Uh, the good thing is we have Select so you can translate for MVP bet <laughs> between all of us. And then yeah, when we make our plans, I think a lot of it will come down to whether we are able to win the charades. Uh, if we are, then we can pick a pretty good racial combination. And if not, we can also try to play it safe. 
um, but we have to choose our race combination before we know whether we're going to win the charades or not. Mm, so, so it will come down to confidence about that. All right. Well, good luck, Grubby, in your first match. Thanks. All right, so Sokka, you know your first team. You're on with Stefano and Nesti, the only Zergs. Do you have any thoughts on the first match in Macro Micro? Mm, yeah, I think we've got lots of... Well, I mean, we've got good players. Uh, if communication-wise it works out, I think we can win, yeah. All right, cool. Well, you don't have any Terran players, but you do have the Zergs. Do you feel, like, overall confident in your matchups? Mm, I'm fine as long as I don't have to play Terran, so... Winning the charade would be would be good for me, I guess. All right, well, hopefully your acting skill is as good as your StarCraft skills. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks. So, Nesty, what are your thoughts on your team? I think he, he thinks his team is fine, but I'm worried about myself. Oh, why are you worried about yourself? It's because he, he doesn't know how to play off phrase. He can only play Zerg, so he's really worried about it. Well, you're, hopefully your acting then can make up for that. Well, good luck, Nest. <laughs> All right, MVP, you asked and you got Grubby. What do you think of your other two team members? He thinks uh, my team is much better than other team. Ah, okay. How are your acting and drawing skills, though? Will you win the charades? He believes Groovy will explain well for him. <laughs> All right, well, let's see. Good luck in your first match, MVP. All right, before we begin, we're going to have a little bit of charades between the two pairs. One person will guess, and one person will draw or act out the StarCraft unit. The winner gets to pick the race, the loser has to pick random. Lisa's going to count us down, and they'll have 30 seconds to guess as many as they can. Okay, three, two, one. Duckling. A zealot. A Thor. Dark Templar. Overlord. Colossus. Well, congratulations, guys. You got five. We could barely hear you, but it seemed like you were on par. What do you think of Nesty's acting skill? Uh, I was actually very posit positively impressed. Uh, yeah, like circling off the bat when there was Thor. I thought I was at at first because of the, the beating motion, but it was actually just the shots. Colossus, I mean, look, just look at the drawing. I mean, <laughs> obviously a Colossus. And the Hydrolisk, yeah, if, if, you, if you know it spits, yeah, uh, it's easy. Well, it's good. Speak from experience. Well, good luck, guys. Yeah, five thanks. is a pretty good number. All right, Sokka and ST got five. How much will Grubby and MVP get? 30 seconds. Three, two, one. Too low. Zealots! Hep. Marin. Stuko? Fumilta. Ah, he got it, immortal. Ten. Ghost. Ghost. Morado. Oh! <laughs> All right, so there was a tie. We're going to determine with a good old rock, paper, scissors. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, on your count. Three, two, one, go. Oh, MVP wins. 
All right, so MVP, what race will you play? We play? Protoss. Uh, Protoss. And you guys will have to choose random. Good luck, Hans. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we just saw a rather riveting game of rock, paper, scissors to decide who would get to pick their race in our macro micro game. How do you feel about the, the results of our very mathematical decider? Yeah, it was extremely high level rock, paper, scissors. Uh, sadly, uh, it, before that it ended in a draw five to five. Uh, so we had to settle this with well, uh, an age old game uh, of rock, paper, scissors and MVP uh, being the great player he is, uh, won that decisively. 1-0. It was a close call. I mean, it also comes down to that brilliant acting that we saw. I think uh, a big highlight, Grubby, really, really going all out with his acting to try to get those points. But now we have our first, our first game prepared. We have our teams and our players. Grubby with MVP versus Sake and Nesty. How do you feel about the Sake and Nesty team up? These are both teams are actually Koreans with foreigners. Not, no, you know, we have that issue of the communication barrier that we talked about earlier. Yeah, well, uh, one thing to note is Sokka and NST are both known for their great macro rather than their uh, micro. And it's funny because the other team is more known for their control than their macro. Of course, MVP is known as the most complete player, especially in Wings of Liberty. He was by far the king of wings, uh, as people like to call him. And uh, yeah, I'm very curious how they will divide the task. Uh, MVP and Grubby, of course, will be playing Protoss, and ST and Sokka will be playing random. So we'll see how that will pan out. I think Grubby will be doing the macro, and MVP the micro. But in the other team, I really have no idea how they will divide those tasks. It's a really funny close call that you mentioned, uh, that both teams kind of, like, like, like the opposites as far as what both yeah. players specialize in. Because I can, I can totally see Grubby as well, you know, a player that he loves this high Templar, the storms, the force fields, the, the very standard Protoss things. And then again, on the other hand, a lot of the Korean players are actually known for being good at their off races. So we don't really, uh, of course, know which random race Nest, T, and Sake will get. But I feel like it, it's, it's one of those situations where which one of them can be more complete at any races macro versus the micro which I think you, you can kind of you can kind of figure it out a bit more easily I think the micro aspect yeah I completely agree with that sentiment and uh, now that you mentioned it like this that the Koreans normally do have a better off race because in uh, in-house they sometimes like to play off races for fun um, so yeah uh, I think that most likely Nesty will be playing the macro and Sokka the micro. All right, well, that's the players. You guys know the game. It's time to go into our first game here for the ESGN TV Arcade Edition Fight Night. We'll be right back with Fight Night. Harston and I will be seeing everything, including you, Fight Night. Every night is Fight Night. My favorite food? Spaghetti. With a side of fight knife. Excuse me, waiter. Could you please bring me your finest bottle of fight knife? It ain't much if it ain't Dutch. Just watch. It's fight night, bitches. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to ESGN TV's Arcade Edition Fight Night. We are getting ready to go into our first map of the evening, our macro micro Harsum. How do you feel about this? We, we already have the team set, we have the map set, everything is prepared for this game. Yes, and we see the players discussing, or well, we see one team discussing. The other team is, uh, well, mentally connected, so they don't even need to discuss their strategies. We saw uh, White Ryan Stefano just relaxing a bit on the couch, Sokka and Nesty uh, having a little talk, but the other team seems to be more of a real team, really working together and uh, thinking of their strategy. Of course, for them, it's a bit easier because they know their race already. That's true, having won the, the uh, end-all, be-all, rock, paper, scissors match, Grubby and MVP just 
Uh, we, we've seen them huddled together, getting ready with their strategy. And it's kind of interesting because picking your strategy for a match like this can be a bit a bit weird. Uh, they do know that they're Protoss, but their opponent is random. Protoss, I feel classically you're least comfortable in build orders picking versus random players because the reactions versus Zerg can be quite different as well. Yeah, I uh, agree with that. But however, they can uh, already get a plan against every race. So they can, for example, say, I'll scout early. And then if you see this uh, race, I'll do a certain build order. If I see this race, I'll do a certain build order. And this way they can still prepare for every race. All right, well, we'll have to see how they prepare as uh, we do have all the players sitting down and we're getting ready to go into our first game of the night. I'm very curious what's gonna happen. I think it's Grubby that's doing the macro uh, for the Grubby MVP team, like I predicted earlier. And I'm wondering who's gonna do the Macro in the Sokka and ST, and it's gonna be Sokka. And uh, they got quite lucky there, because yeah. they got Protoss. Yeah, uh, Sokka, uh, you just kind of look at it, he's, he's a typically Protoss player. Nesty picks up on the micro. I, I think that's within his range of abilities to do. Protoss, I, uh, some of the more micro-intensive things, being able to, it's about being able to place force fields, place the storms, and if that even comes into the hand at a PvP, of course. But Grubby MVP, so MVP going with the micro, what kind of what kind of strategy do you think we'd see on this map? There's a very close air distance, I think, for us. Uh... I think uh, on this map, uh, Stargate play definitely is favored. Uh, not just because of the air close air distance, as well as because uh, you can really micro your units. And an Oracle with good control, yeah, it's worth its weight in gold. Yeah, I, I completely have to agree. And this is, as a two-player map, both players, they know where each other are at the very beginning. Uh, and if this game does go long, it has the interesting features of the, the gold base in the center. We see the gateway starting up for both players. Neither of them really doing anything crazy. The, everything seems pretty standardly timed, I'd say. And we actually have uh, Grubby te Team Grubby checking out, making sure there's no proxies near their base. Don't want to be caught off guard by any, I guess, crazy micro-oriented uh, build. Exactly, and uh, Sokka going for the double gas. So is Grubby, so uh, quite similar build, but Sokka... Saving some minerals, going for the later in-base scout. Of course, it's very, very risky to proxy two gate a random. So he, of course, yeah, you wouldn't expect that. He does check for the one gate as well, a uh, bit outside of his base too. And yeah, Sokka playing it very safe. Uh, Grubby opting to not go for a scout at all. Yeah, I, I, I think when you take the conservative build like this, if you don't know that it's a PvP, I, maybe he still wants to go for the Stargate base play. The cybernetics cores are just beginning, so we have a little bit more time before we see those tech choices. But now the first probe is moving out in the south position for Team Sake, and that, that could potentially be some very aggressive proxy tech. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what this one is going to do. We see uh, Grubby starting with a Zealot right now, so he might go aggressive, uh, the more aggressive side. And there comes the pylon down for Sokka. You were right, this might be some uh, proxy action from uh, Team Sokka and ST. So it comes down Grubby, as we see uh, wonderful animals on the map. Grubby just now getting into his opponent's base, being able to scout, see what's going on. And I'm wondering if he'll notice to say, does it look like something's missing? Will he anticipate that there's a proxy? The Mothership Core is about to come out for Team Sake, so we'll see Nesty start to use that to deny the vision, of course, from his opponent. And what will it be from Sake? Yeah, I'm very curious. There comes the Stargate down, so it's going to be proxy Stargate. And uh, Sokka actually faked out Grubby by placing a third pylon into his main base. And uh, only after the probe left, he did cancel it. Uh, so yeah, uh, some very interesting uh, early gameplay. Here comes the Stargate in base for Grubby. And this is Grubby MVP, I'm sorry. And this is going to be very, very good for them. If they start with Phoenix against a proxy Stargate, I have no idea how Sokka will come back from that. Yeah, it definitely seems like a, like an interesting situation, especially because if he does hold it off, then the Stargate not being at his base makes it more difficult to defend any type of counterattack. And we have two additional gateways being put up for Team Grubby MVP, and the Mothership Core has been skirting around for Nest Sake, but not really doing too much. So there's the Oracle on the way from the proxied Stargate. Grubby's is about to complete. What will they choose? The Stalker MVP is going around. He's starting to scout. He's looking for any potential proxies, but will he find this in time to know what's going on? Because Grubby started his own Oracle in his base. Oh yeah, so it's going to be Oracle against Oracle. And this is one of the things that is actually uh, well, quite okay for Sokka. Of course, you rather would like to have, uh, would not see a Stargate, but oh, it does get spotted. Do they cancel? 
uh, no, they just let the Oracle finish and start with the Phoenix immediately. Grubby that is. And uh, does the Mothership Core have enough energy for uh, Photon Overcharge? This is what I'm wondering right now. If he does, yes, and he uh, starts it. Wow, this is some great play by, uh, I think MVP controlled that. And once the Phoenix comes out, he can uh, easily get the Oracle. Yeah, just a, a solid read by both players, able to get the Photon Overcharge up to defend. Of course, the Phoenix production very close to Grubby's base. It's a bit easier to keep that defenses. More gateways are being added on for Nesty Saka, but we're not seeing those those additional uh, air units. He's going right for Blink, a bit more of a mobile ground force uh, for the yeah. mid-game stage. Exactly, and uh, we do see Grubby going for the Robo as follow-up, so that's going to be good against Blink. Uh, if you can get some Immortals out against Stalkers, that's always great, of course. Uh, so yeah, we see Sokka producing a few extra Stalkers, uh, adding one more gate. Putting the Chrono Boost on his link. Did he already find the Oracle? Is what I'm wondering. No, here comes the Oracle for Nasty. Nasty. You can't walk or run away from the Phoenixes, buddy. It's not possible. <laughs> Phoenixes are quicker than an Oracle, and uh, two Phoenixes shut that down perfectly. Uh, did the Oracle get any kills? I think he got one or two. I'm not too sure. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really look like either of them have been able to do any damage yep. with the with the Oracle openings that they've chosen, but this is where that micro part of the game we were talking about comes in. MVP still has that Oracle alive. Now he has the Phoenix here as well with these Stalkers. He can focus all of his attention on...